Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. In today's game, up on the tabletop is Renegade Game Studios Diplomacy. This is a two to seven player game, it takes anywhere between two to four hours to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Diplomacy, you are playing as a large amount of the Eastern world's countries prior to World War I. Each of the different countries are vying for control of other pieces of other players' countries as they move in slowly, year by year, trying to take new territories. Gaining control of these certain access points will generate them no more units for the next year phase. And as you move through, you're going to be doing a certain number of phases in each of the rounds. Uh, a round will consist of basically three parts to it, spring, fall, and winter, each with their own set of phases in which you're going to uh, try to, I guess it's called negotiate, write down orders, uh, then do the orders all at once, and finally you're going to resupply, but only on winter. Uh, at a certain point in the game, whether it be uh, the length of the game, which is seven rounds, so 2007, or nine, 1907, or whether it be a single player victory or all players choose to withdraw, that will determine who wins the game. There's a wide variety of winning conditions, which we'll talk about. But the basic idea is coordinate your forces, be as diplomatic as possible, and as backstabby as you're able to be in the game diplomacy. Okay, let's take a look at how to set the game up, how to play, and then of course my review. Diplomacy setup is fairly simple. Take the main game board out and place it within reach on the table. From there, you're going to look at the rule book to determine what spaces you're going to be placing what units on. This board has a number of various continents and countries, as well as, of course, uh, the armies and fleets of each of those countries. Fleets are ships, armies are cannons. Place down your flag in each of the regions of your country with a star on them and the associated unit based on the rulebook. So, for instance, you would place in Moscow your flag and one army unit, aka a cannon. You'll do so for the rest of the players on this board here. Give everybody a pen or a pencil, one of these sheets they can use to keep track of the location or write it down on, or take a picture on your phone, as well as a piece of paper. You're going to be needing it. This is where you write down your orders. And then from there, set aside all your extra pieces in a reachable area. And if you're playing with multiple players, uh, they're going to get set aside certain countries. In a four-player game, as an instance, everybody gets two countries except for one player who gets England. If you're all playing with seven players, each player is going to get one singular country along with their units. That's it. That's the game. It's an easy setup. Okay, so let's give you the abridged version of how to play Diplomacy. Diplomacy works fairly simple. There's going to be a spring and a fall season. That's kind of like your round here. And then after that, that's an entire year, you'll go on to the next year, which is the next spring and fall. And you're going to be charting all this down. 1901, spring, then fall. 1902, spring, then fall. And you'll be running your orders and you'll be doing them. This game is fairly simple. The first phase of each of the two seasons, spring and fall, is going to start by negotiating. Players are going to walk into a back room or talk amongst each other or text each other negotiations, dipl diplomatic things they'd like to do in their conquests. Now, you never have to abide by literally anything in this game. There's no binding promises, and in fact, you are encouraged highly to not always guarantee anything because you're going to need to do some nasty things in this game in order to win. Break your trust, break your bonds of friendship, and simply destroy one another. But maybe start off a little nice just to make sure that you don't get trounced on too early. Just like in the game of Risk, if you become too quickly an enemy, players will take you down a notch. After you're done negotiating, whether it be for 30 minutes or 20 or even just 5 minutes, you're simply going to go to the writing orders phase. When you write orders, you're going to do it like I said. You will start with spring of 1901. You're going to write down your orders for each of your units in each of your territories. If you're playing a smaller number of players in a game, you might have two countries, in which case you'll write one set of units over here, maybe your German units, maybe your Russian units over here. And the way you'll do that is you're going to be assigning each of your units in a location an action. There are four actions that you can take, and I'll explain them as simply as possible. Action one is hold, which means you're choosing to do nothing. You're staying there on that location, hoping to hold it. Action number two is you may move. Armies may move inland, or they may move to a coastal region. Fleets may move to a coastal region, from a coastal region that is adjacent, or to a sea space like the Gulf of Bosnia, Baltic Sea, Northern Sea, Norwegian Sea, I think you get it. The next thing that you can do is support. 
in order to support a unit, that unit that is going to support that other unit must be able to move into that unit's space. So I could have Moscow go ahead and support the uh, fleet in uh, St. Petersburg because Moscow's army can move to the fleet's location. And then I'm going to send the unit I'm supporting to a location. Why do I do that? Supporting is gonna generate you power in this game and each unit has one power. So if one unit comes up against another, they're gonna clash and do nothing. So you're gonna actually have to have a higher amount of power in order to take out your opponent. If you do, when you support a unit, then those units that you fight that you have higher power than will have to retreat if there is an open space or they're going to be removed. The last thing that you can do is convoy. To convoy, you're gonna to have to use a fleet. This will allow you to move an army from a location that is on land through the sea to an adjacent location on that sea area. So for instance, if I'm in Lenovia, I have a fleet in the Gulf of Bobnia, I will have the fleet convoy the army in Lenovia, Lenovo, and then I will have the army move from Lenovo to Sweden because it's already being convoyed, allowing me to move across that Gulf of Bobnia. And those are the four actions that you can take in the game. Don't move, move, give somebody power for an attack when they move, or give somebody the ability to convoy when they move across an ocean space. Once you've written down, written down all of these specific uh, actions for each of your units, you're done. And everyone is gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna move this guy here and this guy here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and support this guy here and convoy this army across the ocean over here and you're gonna resolve it all at once. Everybody resolves all their orders all at once, which can be a little chaotic, but the idea is everything happens at once and whatever can't happen, doesn't happen. Two guys go to the same location and they're all the same power, they're just gonna go back home. Most of the time, nobody's gonna be dying in this game as far as losing units, but there will be a time where that's gonna happen when all spaces adjacent are gonna be blocked because no more than one unit may ever hold more than one space. And a space is a defined area with black lines. So if I was at, oh, I don't know, the Northern Sea and everything around was entirely blocked by others' units, that unit that gets attacked there and has lower power is just gonna be removed until the next phase where you get to bring in more units. Spring happens, go through the steps, fall happens, go through the steps. And at the end of fall is a smaller step called winter. And winter is going to allow you to basically gain your units back. Based on the number of territories you now control, you're going to be switching flags. For instance, if my fleet made it to Sweden by the winter phase, my fleet from Russia is going to gain a Russian flag on Sweden. And during winter, I now have five flags instead of four. So I get to choose any one of my units and place it on a space in my country. You may only ever place units in your country and only if there is a space open with your flag on it, thusly now giving me five units. If I had less units because somebody stole one of my flags, I'm gonna have to remove units equal to the number of flags that I have. So you're basically gaining or losing units based on how many flags you now control, and you only gain flags during this phase as well. So you'll have two moves for each unit before you have to determine what's left over in the rubble. And you will rinse and repeat this phase. There are seven years you can play up to 1907. Uh, or you can choose to do a singular victory where somebody controls 18 of these star-studded locations, aka your little capital areas, um, or it's a mutually decided end. We're only gonna play four turns of this game of diplomacy and whatever country has the most is the winner. If you're playing more than one country, each of these countries specifically counts separately. If I'm playing Russia and Italy, if Russia has eight territories, Italy has four, I don't add those up. I only get to choose one of them to be my victory points at the end of the game. Whoever has the most points is the winner, or if you're the last person standing with 18 at the end of the winter phase, you're the winner of the game diplomacy. So let's talk about this 
classic game. So Diplomacy is a classic game, which means it's been around for quite some time, probably since the era of Risk. Don't know which came first, you can tell me in the comments. But I do know that this game doesn't use the same tactics that Risk does. Risk is more about a little bit of luck, a little bit of strategy, and this one is complete and utter strategy with a lot of communication. That's why this game can take quite a long time. You're going to have games with this where people don't want to talk and they simply just write their orders down and see what happens. Those are quicker games. Or games where people really want to get into the game, discuss their strategies and backstab each other, in which the game can take up to four hours. Quite easily with seven players. Speaking of seven players, this game plays best at seven players. Six is also fine. Less players equals less fun because you want to have as many people to screw over as possible in the game Diplomacy. Uh, does this game still hold up in the modern age? Yeah, it actually does. This is a game where you are writing down orders and manipulating the board as well as your friends to gain as many spots as you can and control as many areas as you can. But what you can never control is people backstabbing you after you've been promised this wonderful idea of this alliance and working together and the next thing you know you've lost half your country. It can happen. It's a slow game though. This is a slow roll which is explained historically speaking spring, fall, and winter. That's one year and you get basically two actions for each of your units before the year ends. You're not going to go very far and it actually makes sense not only like in like how, how it would likely happen in the real world, but um, getting from uh, Moscow to Lenovia, it's gonna take six months based on their ability to travel. So that actually makes quite a lot of sense. It also makes sense that you don't simply just start losing billions of units. What happens is if you feel like you're losing a fight, typically speaking, especially back then, you would always have your units retreat. And that is what's gonna happen in this game. You'll also have units supporting other units to benefit them in some way, shape or form. And supporting is more of a sense of just giving them additional weaponry or whatever it is that you might think because their units stay where they are. Now what confused me about this game, and there's a lot of things that confuse me based on the rules, but the first thing is that if you support a unit that is being convoyed, that convoy unit is actually going to keep that power. It's not just simply any adjacent unit that supports it, um, which is what it is technically, but no matter where you are, wherever you end up with, because the convoy can take you in multiple spaces, uh, it's where you end up with the, your previous area that you've got supported is what counts as your power. So just consider them all kind of going with you and then kind of coming back after the fight is over. Uh, this game also provides you with the uh, sheets here that explain like the locations and whatnot, give you the abbreviations for the different locations that you control. And you can use this, you can write stuff down, probably a pencil is what I would prefer. So you can start erasing and whatnot, maybe even better. I'd laminate this. That's what I'm probably going to do with the extra ones is laminate seven of them. So you can use dry erase, like a thin dry erase marker, so you can start moving your strategies around and whatnot and uh, controlling where you want to position yourself and your units. The game also requires a lot of thinking. You are going to be deciding where you're going to use and move these three to seven, eight units, and it starts getting more and more as the game goes on. Um, and there's specifically ways to how to write this stuff. But really, in my opinion, it's just, you can write it however you want, provided everybody else understands. So what I would do is I would usually write out the abbreviation of the location with a slash, what type of unit it is, whether it be a fleet or an army. And then I would say what it's going to do. Is it going to move? Is it gonna support this unit in this area, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll do that for each of your units. And it, it works fairly well. And most of the time you just have to have a trust thing. I can look at everybody's piece of paper every single time. If somebody goofs on their commands, they do nothing. Their unit actually stays there. And that's awesome. I actually love that idea because in the real world, if you were a general and you told your army to go to Lenovia, but you wanted them to go to Ukraine, um, they actually will go to Lenovia. Or if you told them to do an action they can't do, like move to Finland from Moscow, they just stay there. So they either follow orders that you made on accident or they do nothing because they can't do the action you actually wanted them to do. So you actually have to think about what you're writing in this game. This game is a deep, heavy, intrigue, conquest type of a game and each turn matters. Your first movements matter greatly. Italy's gotta go down to the North African continent and steal that location there. France has, ha has to head over to Spain to gain Portugal. And England is going to have to head over to Belgium and Holland and maybe even Norway as well to control those areas and so on and so forth. There's all areas in which players can gather and gain additional units before the actual conquest can start. And 
when you first start playing the game, you'll start to realize these little mistakes that you've made. Or if you're smart, you'll kind of uh, be diligent about the game before you just jump in and start moving. You'll look around the game board, see what areas you can take control of. This game is devious. I think it was rated as one of the most mean games of all time, and I'd say definitely, it's definitely possible even still now that it is one of the top 10 meanest games because there's a lot of lying that goes on. There's a lot of people believing you and excited about their turn and they've done the best that they can do. It's like they've controlled everything, to their po everything they possibly could control to gain as much value as they can on their turn. And then everyone who they forged deals with throughout this entire two hour period so far is all on board with them and they've got these plans and things set in motion. And then they all lied to you and all your stuff is now being fought in each of the weakest areas because all of them now know your weakest areas and they've all been canoodling and conniving with each other to take you down. And so the pendulum swings back and forth in this game. The worst thing about all of that too, or even the best, is that when you're working with these people and it's all going well and they attack you when you were not prepared for it, at some point and later on, you'll still have to work with them. You have to because at some point, there's not gonna be any areas left. So you have to try and take somebody else down. And so feelings get hurt in this game. That's kind of what this game is all about is, is lying the game with a risk-esque feel to it with no luck and all strategy. <laughs> Diplomacy is a solid game. Uh, it's still dated. There is a few things I still like change to. What I do love about this version of the game is now all the pieces are wooden. The board is beautiful and illustrated. The maps are easy to understand. Maybe thicker dark lines would be nice. And I just would prefer the rules to still kind of be more updated. I'd like to see a turn structure or player reference cards. It's so wordy when the game is fairly simple to understand. I know that there's a lot of complexities as far as how you can convoy, what locations you can and can't move to, and what happens in certain instances where one army hits another army based on this or that. And there is a lot of that kind of stuff, which I'm not even gonna get into. You can look on the back of the book. There's too many of them to cover. I'll just say that there's a lot of little complexities when it comes to moving, supporting, and convoying. Um, and those can all be in FAQs, that's fine. But I just wanted to straight like, here's what you do, spring, fall, and then there's the winter and it explains it. And it, it, this is definitely better than the previous uh, game that I played for my friend's house. It's obviously way updated. Um, but I wish it was kind of like less, I, this is fine to have a quick reference rule sheet, but I wanted a quick reference guide as well. That would be nice. Um, and of course, like I said, I'd love to, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is, what would have been probably nicer is pens and maybe like a uh, uh, plastic around this or simply made dry erasables. I know dry erase can be a hit or a miss on things, but all the writing you're gonna do and plans you wanna have, basically this is all for not halfway through because it's just filled and it's covered and you can you might as well just use it as a reference sheet and be done with it as opposed to writing all over it because you're not going to be able to keep track of all the stuff that's going on it's also a long game you need to have six seven players you can play at four it was fine at four five was better but seven is the true way to play diplomacy having more players to work with and talk with the whole aspect of the game isn't this actually it's the conversations that you have and then when you get to this, it's the emotion that you feel when you experience the success of working together with allies or the despair of everyone conniving against you and lying to you directly to your face or behind others' backs and then they talk to each other afterwards. It's a solid game. Now, it's not gonna to appeal to everybody. This game, because of the amount of hurt feelings and broken hearts it can, it can have, it's gonna be one of those type of games where if you do not like mean games, you need to stay away. It's also still a little dated. The game is very simplistic in nature with a lot of complexities uh, for each individual circumstance that can happen and the rules are still exceptionally wordy as well. I strongly suggest you look for a full how to play video on YouTube. There's a ton of them out there for diplomacy, which is why I didn't wanna get super heavy into it, all the intricacies, because you can find them everywhere. But they exist and they'll explain the game far better than I would suggest going through the rules and whatnot. You will miss certain things, especially when it comes to like movement and whatnot, because there's so many things you can kind of miss out on. I think it's easier verbally understanding that. That being said now, after all those mids and highs and lows about the game, overall diplomacy is a wonderful classic game. 
There is a lot of strategy to it. This specific version is beautiful. I love the style of the board and the miniatures are easy to tell the difference between. I always strongly suggest you flip over the flags for those of you who cannot remember specific flags and instead use the color that will determine that you are playing as white as opposed to playing as Russia. Or instead of playing um, as German, you can go ahead and play black. And so you can kind of keep track and everybody else can as well. And you have that option in the game, which is actually rather nice. So you can kind of mix and match that. The fact that they give you these boards are nice. You will be utilizing them. Wish they gave you a pad, but you'll have to provide your own pens and paper and you will need that in order to play this game. Not a huge deal, not a huge turnoff, but overall a much better version of Diplomacy than the last one that I played. Artwork's great. Game is a lot of fun. If you like a war game mixed with complexities, a deep, heavier game with a minimalistic feel, with not a huge amount of units on the game board whatsoever, then you're going to really enjoy Diplomacy. Get those seven players out and prepare for a full night of fun, laughter, and especially tears. I recommend Diplomacy still, even to this day. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Diplomacy by Renegade. This has got a Hasbro logo on it, it's Avalon Hill, and Wizards of the Coast. And I'm sure that this has been printed a number of times from a number of different publishers because the game holds up, obviously. I know people who still play Diplomacy. I know my grandparents still play Diplomacy. So it goes to show how strong of a title this one is. If you would like, you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification button, so you can see more of our videos that are pre-reproduced about two, three times a week. We do a live stream on Sundays on all platforms at 6.30 p.m. PST. And we also do a whatnot stream on Thursdays where we sell games similar to Diplomacy. If you'd like to join us there, it's a lot of fun as well as our Discord. All right, guys, link in the description for you to pick up the game Diplomacy. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to lying to you next time. That's, that's what you're going to do in this game.